What's up? This is Casey. And Coach Tom. This is Shot Science Overtime, number 197. Look at there already. How about that? They're waiting for us? We're close. Yep, yep. We got Kobe Kyrie and Philip Cohn. Philip Cohn, you must be on alerts or something because you were here <laughs> literally the second we start. Hi. Uh, o King Sai is here too. Um, guys, this is number 197. That means we're closing in on 200. So maybe 200. We should do something special or something like yeah, that. Maybe okay. we can get a, a guest or something. Well, maybe we can have a party, whatever. <laughs> um, hopefully, we'll we'll change our location a little bit too, so that maybe we'll have a background or something. <laughs> um, but uh, let's see, 197. Okay, so today we are going to have a live show, and we have these most fairly regularly on Sundays at 1 p.m. Um, Pacific time. And these are not our tutorials. So if you guys want our tutorials, you can go check those out. We got a full library of that stuff. We also have those over on the website um, at shotscience.com. Um, but this is where we talk to you guys. And if you guys have questions about basketball, you want to talk to some coaches or get coaches' perspective, now is the time to do it. And if that's not for you, that's cool. You can, you can check us out on some of the other videos. Um, but we are here to talk to you guys, have a little face-to-face uh, -face time, or at least our faces. <laughs> And uh, while we're doing our upfront topic that we have for you guys, you guys need to send us your basketball questions. So anything basketball related, whether it's shooting, passing, dribbling, defense, how to talk to your coach, athleticism, ver vertical jump, whatever it is, send those over our way yeah. and we will do our best to answer those as soon as we're done. And the reason we have a topic up front is because we want to help you guys become a better basketball player and we think we can maybe help cut out some of the learning curve a little bit. That'd be great, yeah. And also, it gives us time to get people in here yeah. so that we can yeah. we can have enough questions to, to kind of jump in on. Um, so please uh, please uh, stick with us here. It looks like we got a bunch of people. Brandon Lung is here. High Shot Science. Andrew Zhang, hey. Chess Mate, hey. Uh, Deceased Bottom, uh, it says, hey, from Michigan. Uh, I've, I've liked the Warriors forever. What's up, Coach? All right. Awesome. I, that's like us. We're, we're Warriors fans, too. Um, let's see here. Okay, and then people are trying to ask questions. Awesome. Right. So keep sending those questions in. We're going to jump into our topic right now, which is keys to being a great point guard. Yeah. Uh, so what are your thoughts there? Well, and you know. We should, we should say something up front, though. Up front, we want to tell you guys that you should always play or develop your, your game to be a versatile all-around player. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. You should never focus in on just being one thing. So be an all-around versatile player. You will be a much more valuable player. Right. Coaches will want to put you on their team. But that said, point guard is a position that you can play. So, yeah, and, and it may be one that you are put into without you having much uh, uh, input on, on that. And so some things that are really important about playing that position – it's probably one of the most demanding positions mentally uh, that there is in basketball. And the reason is that you're really taking the control of your basketball team and offering it direction, support, uh, all kinds of things like that. And so one of the things that, that we kind of have done is, is kind of dissected some of the things that we think are really important for you as a point guard, okay? And, you know, if you're interested in this, you might want to take and write some of these down as we go through them. We're, we may not hit every one of them. We've got 10 here. We may not hit all of them. But one of the ones that is most important about a point guard is to control the tempo of the basketball game. Oftentimes when you don't have uh, uh, people who are, are really – uh, understand the position, uh, they're going crazy with the dribble. Or, or they, they get too amped up yeah, or yeah. Uh, they don't know what to do essentially right. with you know the basketball or whatever and you can kind of get panicked. Uh, controlling the tempo. You probably think I've seen some teams who have really good shooters and their shooters don't have a competition team or a travel team. And I said, uh, who's the best shooter on your team? And he says, well, I think I'm maybe number two. And I said, I know your team. I know the players and you're number one. How many times did you get to shoot the basketball in the last game? Uh, I only got three shots. Well, now that's a breakdown there in communication between the coach and the uh, uh, guy who's in charge, the point guard, let's say, because in my book, somebody like that needs to be able to have the ball in their hands and, and uh, maybe 15 times a game, maybe getting between 9 and 12 shots a game. Otherwise, you're not going to have the scoring production that you really need. So uh, that point guard needs to know who are the shooters and where are they, and in these different play actions, 
where are they located where we can get the best look at the basket. So right. that's really important. Okay. Let's take a time out for All a right. second here. <laughs> uh, we're having like weird issues with Biden. All right, you guys. Hopefully, <laughs> we're working now. Uh, sorry about the internet issues. Okay. So do you want to get in, back into it? And let us know if you guys can see us. That would help us out a yeah, lot, Yeah, that too. helps us a lot. Okay. You know, probably the next item we ought to talk about is, is this, is that w the point guard typically is going to have the ball in their hands uh, most times when you're coming up a floor, especially after made baskets. And so uh, the one thing that you want to do there is make sure you look to advance the basketball up the floor with the pass and instead of dribbling it up. It takes longer for us to dribble it up. And if we can take and throw a 20-foot pass and maybe another 20-foot pass, and we're right at the basket already. And so advance that ball up the floor as quick as possible so you get right into your offense early, okay? Right. okay. All right, uh, next item, uh, and this is one that's really important for us to do, and that is develop good court vision. Uh, oftentimes, uh, play, guys who are playing that point position play with their head down, and they don't really see very much. When you get that head up, you can see all kinds of things, and uh, you scan the floor uh, with those eyes, and where are people? Uh, where is the defense? Uh, are they playing zone? Are they playing man? Are they pressuring us? What are they going to do? And so when we have our eyes up the floor, that floor vision allows us to make some decisions about what it is that we need to do or what we're going to do. Okay. And, and that's why when you're trying to develop your ball handling skills, it's important to not have your head down. <coughs> it's important to have your head up, right. scanning your horizons and seeing what's going on and learning that, you know, the ball is round. It's going to get back up to your hand just like, a, you know, you bounce it and it should come right back up. You need to really work on developing having your head up and being aware. Not just yeah. head up, but being yeah. aware of what's going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, really what's important. the next one? All right, the next one is learn how to communicate with your teammates. And uh, communication in basketball and probably a lot of sports is like this, team sports, and that is we communicate with our, our physical communication. In other words, we're directing people maybe with our hands or we're directing with our eyes, uh, and we can actually help set people up. Uh, with our eyes and these, these uh, commands. We use verbal commands al almost all the time. Sometimes you can't hear those verbal commands, and so maybe you've got some, uh, where's my hand here on this? All right, we've got different th kind of things that we do with our hands maybe to give that information to our teammates about what we're going to do. Okay? But, it's, but one of the things that's important is that most uh, things that you are coordinating with your teammates don't work well if you're not communicating with yes, them. Yes. So if you're trying to set screens, a back screen, a ball screen, if you're trying to uh, go back door on somebody, I mean, right. that's that's one of those things where if they don't know you're doing that, they'll pitch it right into the stands, and that's yeah. that's not good. Yeah. Um, uh, or any any kind of play you're trying to set up, that is all really important. So there's verbal and nonverbal types of, of communication. Yeah, and that nonverbal oftentimes will take and, and come, the, you know, look at the guy's eyes. He'll give you a look, and you know that well, he's going to make a back cut. And preparing uh, beforehand to know what all that is. Too. Yeah, yeah, and that's just a learning process. Okay. Okay, now then learn to communicate with your uh, teammates. Uh, uh, well, we had that word. Learn how to make your teammates play harder. Hmm, how can I make them play harder? I'm a point guard. Well, usually the point guard is going to set the tone. And he sets the tone because he is really aggressive. He's playing hard. And the rest of your players usually will fall in line with that. And they'll try and keep up with you and play as hard as you're playing. So you can kind of set the tone there. Uh, and it's like team dynamics, too, where you are setting the competitive edge. Right. And so they're going to try to come up to meet you on that. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it's, it's, there is a lot to be said about setting an example. There's also something to be said about kind of rewarding them with your praise or encouragement. Right. Um, and, you know, if, if, if everybody is seeing you do something, they're more apt to do it too. Yeah. But if everybody is just kind of kicking back, that's the status quo of the team. So that's what it's going to be. So yeah. it's changed the set point of that. Yeah. And, you know, one of the things that makes a lot of teams, probably most teams go, is the fact that those who play really hard uh, are the ones who tend to be more successful. Uh, and that's hard on offense, hard on defense. Okay. Okay. All right. So next item is create shots for your teammates. Now, that's an interesting one. How do we create shots? Well, uh, there's a thing, uh, several things we could do. Uh, we could actually use what we call dribble influence. And dribble influence means that I'm going to make my defender move by using my dribble. 
and I'm going to try and create a better passing lane to one of my teammates by doing that. And so I'll take and drive my uh, uh, defender maybe left, and so he has to go there. If he doesn't, then I'm going to go to the bucket and have, or have a good look. And so then I create a better passing angle for my other teammates, and so that's real important for you to do. Yep. You, attacking the basket off the dribble is really important because one of the <coughs> things that happens is that when you get into the middle of the defense as a point guard or a, a, a one or two, uh, what happens is the defense begins to squeeze down because they, they're trying to take care of that pressure on the interior, which happens to open up other players for other shots. And so by attacking the basket and causing the collapse of that defense, we maybe have some three-point shooters on the outside that can get looks and, and make those shots. And so yeah, well, that's I mean, we, creating for your teammates. We always talk about being the ones that are taking action, not the ones that are, are reacting. And so you want the defense to be reacting to you so that they're in recovery and they're a step behind. So that's how you really create those opportunities for other people is because the defense is all out of sorts and everybody else has, uh, you know, maybe an open look or maybe they have an opportunity to make a cut or set a screen or whatever. You're you're creating those situations by pushing your offense. Right. Okay. All right. Uh, One of the next ones is this. Avoid the standing dribble. Now, if you don't know what a standing dribble is, it's just what it says. You're standing in one spot and standing there dribbling the basketball. What's happening? Nothing. Okay. And so oftentimes we'll have to maybe do that for a moment or two as we communicate with our players and kind of get them in and started into something. But the more you do that, more the offense wants to stall. Uh, because well, well, I mean, you're just essentially you're, you're not doing what we just talked about yeah, where exactly. you are not react or you're not acting. You are you're basically kind of just – in, in limbo you're not yeah. reacting or acting right and so that's not good at all right. because the defense could just stand there they exactly. don't even have to do anything exactly right and so it's real important that we be able to take and, and uh, get things moving and keep them moving just because we're moving the ball we're moving our bodies and whatnot and standing dribbles are not good as well because you are creating t- chances and opportunities for something to go wrong where yes. you dribble the ball out of bounds or maybe the defense lunges at you and they're they're the ones taking action and they're the ones that make you react and that's never good so you don't want to waste a dribble either Uh, a lot of times people do the standing dribble and then something happens they pick up the ball oh yeah no more dribble left Uh, that's not a good situation exactly so standing dribble is not a good scenario right it's actually better if if you've already brought the ball up and you're standing there it's better just to stand there with the basketball because Mm -hmm. you still have your dribble ready to go yeah Right. Yeah, exactly right. And a lot of people, they don't understand, uh, maybe younger players or new players, they don't understand that the most dangerous time or the most dangerous that you are is when you don't have the dribble given up yet. Yes, And you're standing there with the basketball. Yeah. Yeah. That is when you are the deadliest because you can do so many things like a jab step or a long one and one or whatever, and you have your dribble after the right. fact as well. Shoot it. I mean, there's so many things you can yeah. do. And that brings us to maybe the last point, which is this, and that is don't give up your dribble. Uh, oftentimes, people will pressure you. Oftentimes, you'll find that two players will come and try to pressure you. And do not give up your dribble because as soon as you give up your dribble, you can no longer move and they can come down and really clamp yep. on you hard. But as long as you keep that dribble alive and keep moving, then it's going to take and create more problems for them and give you more opportunities because somebody who came over here to trap you with uh, the other defender has left somebody open. And so maybe we dribble around and we can get them the ball right away. Uh, but don't give up your dribble unless you know exactly what you're going to do with it. And we've, and and so, we've talked about that stuff before, too, yeah. where, uh, you know, it, it's it, – have escape plans. Have yeah. a plan B where, you know, if there's, a, if there's two guys running at you, you need to know what to do in that situation. And we've talked about that before. Yeah. Um, if you're bringing the ball up and you cross the half-court line, You better not pick the ball up there. Uh, Don't go and get stuck on the sidelines. Don't get stuck in the corner. Um, There's there's so many things. But I think also one of the things that you need to to realize as a point guard, and, you know, like we said before, you are an all-around versatile versatile player. Your coach has told you that you're a point guard in this situation. But if you're in that situation, you need to know that you are not just a ball distributor. Right. 
you are an active participant in playing the game of basketball. Well, you're the conductor. You're going to make it all happen, and and that's really the truth of it. And, and but we see and we see it more nowadays where yeah. point guards are actually attacking and scoring yeah. and shooting, yeah. and they're not just facilitators. Yeah, so, and you know, I know some coaches uh, kind of talk to their players, and they want them to be um, uh, just mailmen. We call them mailmen because they're just passing the mail one side or the other. Just delivering and, the ball. And delivering the basketball to the one side or the other. And uh, so when you do that, maybe you now you've got four players who can score and you've eliminated yourself from the picture. So you want to be able to do that too. Well, I mean, th- th- in that situation, okay, this is getting deep into it, but in that situation, the defense can play off yeah. because they're like, oh, well, that guy's not going to shoot it. He's yeah. going to just try to distribute it. I'll hang off so that I can help and, uh, you know, get a, a double up on whoever is trying to attack the basket. Right. Right. So uh, make yourself a valuable, versatile player, uh, and hopefully those tips will really help you if you are so chosen by the coach to be a point guard. Well, let me throw one more item in here, which just uh, <laughs> okay. kind of came to mind as we were talking. <clears throat> as a point guard bringing the ball up the floor, uh, when you begin to see pressure that's uh, in front of you, uh, it's okay for you to take and, and kind of throttle down, slow down, so you can kind of determine what's going on. And so what happens when we do that is that clock inside of our brain is clicking and you can hear that 10 second uh, uh, limit uh, coming up pretty quickly. And, and we, we certainly don't want to see you turn the ball over in the backcourt, but there's, if, rather than you make a rash mistake, a rash pass, uh, a poor pass because you're trying to beat that 10 second violation, uh, go ahead and take the violation. Uh, and so why? Well, the big reason is this, is that now your team has a chance to take and play defense uh, and defend against people for coming with the basketball. When you throw panic passes because you're kind of uh, in a hurry to beat that 10 seconds uh, violation, is that you throw poor passes, they get t- uh, uh, stolen, and down the court they come, and they end up with uh, a two-on-one, three-on-one kind of situation. So um, play smart, play smart. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so yeah, that's going to do it for our topic today on point guards, but hopefully you guys have been sending us your questions so that we can kind of dive into those yeah. and, and start to answer those. Keep sending them in because we're going to go through as many as we can. Um, just want to tell you guys that, uh, if it would be awesome if you could follow us on all of our social media stuff, sure. we are shot science on everything. So if it's Twitter, we're at shot science. If you're on Facebook, we're shot science there, different stuff going on in all those places. Um, and we'd love for you to be a part of the team there. Make sure you guys check out shotscience.com because that's where we have all of our, our shirts. You can see here, <laughs> Coach Tom not representing today, so maybe you can pull up the slack and help us out. Um, but get a Shot Science shirt. That really helps us in being able to do all the stuff that we want to do for you guys, put out new videos and uh, have clinics and all that stuff. It also really makes us feel good to see you guys on social media wearing our shirts, yeah, doing absolutely. the workouts and shirts. Uh, if you put hashtag Team Shot Science in any of the stuff that you do, we see all those and we like to feature those people on our social media account stuff. So if you want to show up on our Facebook page, which has almost 2 million people, that might be a way to do it. Um, you can also get like our vertical jump box there and uh, other training gear at shotscience.com. And also you can get the all access membership pass, which is our tutorials, but even deeper uh, kind of taken than w- what we do on YouTube. So yeah. check all that stuff out at shotscience.com. And uh, before we get into answering your guys's questions, uh, you know, it's our show. So we have a question for you guys. Yeah. And our question is the one that we ask every week. It makes us feel really uh, great to see it, uh, the answers that you guys give. But that is this. Where are you located in the world? Yeah, we want to know where you guys are in the world. Are you from... Um, Ghana? Are you from uh, Venezuela? Are you from Iceland? Are you from Lithuania? (laughs) Every week we've got to get that one in. We really respect the Lithuanian (laughs) basketball programs. Yeah, Yeah, we uh, don't mean that in a funny way necessarily. No, well, it is kind of funny, but but you know, Lithuania is a big time basketball country. But we love to see where you guys are from. We love to hear that you guys are kind of spreading the word on shot science basketball. Um, that really helps us a lot, and we appreciate it. But you know, we're going to shout out people that tell us where they're from. So yeah. keep telling us in the in the comments where you guys are from. We have yeah. Zeno from Amsterdam. Zeno's right. here all the time too, yeah. I think. Uh, Daniel Abarca is from Miami. The best of the best. Cunningham is from Texas. Dazan Jelovac is from Serbia. 
Uh, oh, King Sai is from Vegas. Maka, Makela M is from uh, West Palm Beach, Florida. Kanal is from India. Sergio Perez is, is from Tenerife, Canary Islands, Spain. The Canary right. Islands, that's wow. crazy. Wow. Yeah, um, that is crazy. But, uh, I mean, you are way out there. Yeah, wow. <laughs> we are in Santa Cruz, California, which is south of San Francisco on the coast. Um, so it's awesome for us to see you guys and like wherever you guys are from. Yeah. Um, we have, uh, oh man, these names sometimes kill me. Maguin Dana Boy, who's from Bunchen, Germany. Um, and now uh, keep sending those in, you guys. We'll hit more people as we go, but uh, keep sending those in. Let's get into some of these questions okay. because we, well, uh, we said, of them. Yeah. Um, and we're sorry about any of the technical difficulties. Hopefully that's not going to happen anymore. Yeah. Um, okay. Rymerk says, I'm busy with school and stuff, but I need to train more. How can I make time to train more? And how long to actually improve in basketball? You know, that, that's a tough question for us to a answer for you. Uh, what you need to do is look at your schedule and find out where you can slide in maybe 15, 20 minutes where you're maybe working on ball skills. Yeah. And maybe there's another slot uh, of time maybe for 15 minutes where you work on your shooting. <coughs> and by moving it around from day to day, you still get that work time in. And you're the guy that has to figure that out. I mean, we don't have uh, some kind of a master uh, thing that can say, okay, this is what you do. Uh, when you've got very little time. Yeah, well, I mean, it, it comes down to a lot of uh, the mantra of FIO, right? Yes, that's right. That's right. Um, yep. Or, it, uh, you know, uh, make it happen as well. But FIO yeah. is figure it out, make it happen. And it's really important for you to be a player that, or a person that can kind of prioritize. Right. Obviously, school is very important. Exactly. Your your health is very important. So you need to get sleep. You need to eat. You need to do that. Your social life is also important because mm -hmm. you need to be able to socialize and, and know people and experience the world. Yeah. But if, if basketball and training for basketball is important for you, then you need to figure out the times to do that. Yeah. Sometimes that means uh, you'll have 20 minutes before you go to bed or yeah. you'll have 15 minutes while you're waiting for the bus to go to school or maybe at recess during school you can have a basketball and you can work on your ball handling then or your shooting then there you have to make it work and it's 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 one of those things where we wish we could say oh well just spend three hours a day doing this yeah. but you're the one that knows your schedule and yeah. you you need to prioritize that well you know as casey was talking this <laughs> flashed into my brain i can remember uh, when Pete Maravich was a young guy uh, and his father was driving him to school, he'd have a basketball and uh, he's hanging out the window dribbling the basketball as the car is moving along the street. Okay? Well, that, that's part I of the I don't mythology. recommend all of that, uh, <laughs> but uh, the point is is that he was utilizing whatever time he had to work on those skills. Yeah. So the take home is is that you, you're in control of that. You yep. need to figure that out. And of course, every person wishes they had more time to yep. do everything. And, you know, balancing school and personal life and all that stuff, that's hard. But the players that are able to become great and the ones that, that are passionate about something, figure it all out. Okay. They work it out. Um, and maybe, maybe it's waking up super early in the morning. Yeah, yeah. You know, there's a lot of players that they wake up at 5 in the morning, 5.30 in the morning. They go get their workout in then yep. and, because that's when they have time. Some of our local basketball teams do that even during the season. They, they meet at the gym at 6.30 in the morning yep, and they practice. You that's, know? I mean, we had basketball class in the morning class, yep. and we would meet at 6.30 in the morning. Yeah. Um, let's see here. Oh, K.A. says, hey, from Germany. All right, K.A. Um, did we just skip through these? Let's see here. Uh, Kobe Kyrie, I think I've seen this a couple times, says, uh, my first question is, finishing is one of my weak points. I can finish with both hands, but I tend to get blocked. What should I do? If you take and go to our, our videos on YouTube, you're going to find uh, some videos there uh, called, referred to as finishes at the rim. Yep. And they will actually give you some answers to those questions and help you be able to get there without getting blocked. And the thing that, that most people do is they're trying to lean away where they are not going to get blocked, when in reality, you want to get into that person uh, so that you get a little separation, a little bump as you go. That's one of the things that we teach all of our players that, uh, 
because we teach everybody not only how to shoot the ball, but how to get the ball to the basket and finish. And one of the things that we talk about is we want you to leverage that player as you're on the way to the basket. We're not in a position where I can really show that, but leveraging is if I'm going to the basket, I've got my arm into that defender and I'm leveraging him to a position where I can score more easily. So that's important things for you to remember. But go look at those finishes at the rim. Yeah, and, and I think there's eight or nine of them. I, yeah, I think there's nine or something. Yeah. But one of the things, too, that you need to know is that if you're creating more complexity for your shot to avoid contact, you're making a huge mistake. Yeah, you you have to really work on focusing on the finish, getting that contact, because that only is to your benefit. Yeah. And you know, a lot of times people get blocked because they're trying to avoid the contact. Exactly. And right. that's not good. So yeah. you're double whamming yourself by making the shot harder and also making it easier for them to block. So get some tools together using those finishes at the rim. Also change your mentality. Contact is good. It puts you in control right. and it puts them at a disadvantage. Exactly. A lot of times, uh, I don't think players always understand that you are going to give get the benefit of the doubts if you had the basketball in your hands. It's almost you almost have to try to create a foul in you know to to get a foul call on you when you have the basketball in your hands. But you can create contact. You can you can generate the contact and still the foul is on them and you get the basket. Exactly right. So hopefully that kind of gives you a little bit better explanation. Okay. And it's hard. One of the things that's hard for us when we do these shows is to get the demonstrations for yeah, you yeah. because we have this little box here and we're, <laughs> we're, you know, we're just, we're just, you know, heads up here. Okay. Um, I like, I've liked the warriors forever says how to be an effective, how to be effective being an undersized center. Um, well, being an undersized center, <coughs> uh, you want to be more active. And you want to have about four or five different things that you can do uh, against the defense, depending on how they play you. Moves and counter moves. Yeah. And one of the things that you find is this, is that let's say you're going to post up at the block, or actually we teach people never to post up at the block, but we want to post up at the first peg. And the reason is that we get a better look at the basket if we go to the baseline side. But once again, we've got videos where you can go and find out what some of those moves are. And uh, we have a couple of people that we're working right now. They're both high school players. And it's, they are becoming indefensible because of the moves that they, can, they have developed <coughs> just in a short couple of months. Okay. And I would say stop worrying about your size. That yep. almost doesn't matter. You have no control over it. Be an all-around versatile player. Yep. Uh, because if you are in the post and you have post moves and if counter moves off of those post moves, you're going to yep. be in good shape. But if you're also able to step back and pull and stretch that defense out, uh, you're going to be able to either get those mid-range shots or you're going to create an opening in the middle where your teammates can score, but also you can score because you're facing the basket now. Well, being a, a smaller player than maybe other post players, you're probably a little quicker than they are. And when you step away from the basket, oftentimes, and you show them the basketball like you're going to shoot it, uh, they'll close out on you, and you put yourself into a situation where you just attack them to the basket. Okay, hopefully you guys are still telling us where you're from. We want to yeah. know, where yeah, are you yeah, playing yeah, yeah. basketball? What country, what yeah. city are you guys playing in? Okay, Zeno is asking, is there any way to reduce your frustration when you're injured? Uh, you know, you have to motivate yourself to yeah. do the things that you can do. So many people get down on themselves because they think, oh, life's over. I just sprained my ankle. Yeah. But that can also be an opportunity. And, you know, you have to create the silver lining where you're the one that's going, oh, well, I sprained my ankle. Now I can work on my ball handling or I can work on my form shooting. Uh, if you, uh, you know, break your arm. That's that's a great opportunity to work on your other hand as right. you're as you're dribbling. You know, right. um, you have to kind of motivate yourself. If you're if you're gonna you know kind of dwell on it and make that something that limits you, yeah. that's that's one hundred percent on you. Yeah, exactly. And here's another thing: every person that plays a sport is gonna get injured. People that play golf get injured. People that bowl get injured. Yeah, right. So you're playing a contact sport, a high energy, high intensity sport. You're going to get injured. Yeah, it's it's going to happen. Likely. But like Casey said, take advantage of the situation rather than uh, feel really bad about it. Yeah. Let's go to work. Um, and, you know, a lot of times you we've seen players and stuff where they've, you know, like I said, they broke their arm or broke their wrist. Right. And they come back and they actually have... Uh, a weak hand develop because yeah. they spent the time working on it because yeah. they couldn't use the other hand. Exactly. Um, 
This is from O King Sai. He says, I can shoot off the dribble better than anyone I know, knock down deep threes and dribble the ball really well. I'm 6'3", but, but I'm big, and I'm also faster than most people who are smaller than me uh, that I can play. That's great. You're a shooting yeah. guard. I don't want to play power forward. Okay, yeah. well. You haven't got a choice, really. Coach uh, tells you. The coach is going to tell you, okay, this is where you're going to play. In most, I, I can't think of a situation where you can select your own position when you play basketball or football or any other thing. Coaches evaluate this player. He's this big. He's this fast. He's got these skills. Okay, that's where we're going to play him. Yeah. And so you really don't have much of a choice in that. And so the important thing is to take all those things that you've got there and do the best job you can wherever they put you. Okay. Yeah. Um, and that's why we always say become an all around versatile player that makes you valuable and able to play anywhere. Yeah, true. Um, Michaela M says, I've never played with a school or any type of program before, but I have been coached personally. What kind of things should I look out for and how can I better my chances of making the team? Well, you're in luck because we've made videos called making the team. Yeah, right. And those are things that, that aren't skill based necessarily <laughs> that we think will help you in kind of registering on the radar of, of coaches that you're trying to play for. They're the qualities that make up great players, great leaders, and things like that. The other thing is is being able to play, having skills, and kind of coming in, coming in as a complete package. Right. Coaches don't want pet projects for their team during the year. Yeah. That is the last thing they want to deal with is, oh, uh, Tom can't shoot free throws. We better spend extra time working on that. Or Casey, he can't uh, you know, do any moves in the post, and he's our post guy. We better work on that. They want you to come in and be a package, ready to go. You can shoot. You can play in the post. You, you, that, that really will make you a better pick for them on the sure. team. Sure. And one of the things that we talk about all the time is know the coach before the tryouts. Yes. They need to know who you are before the tryouts. Well, knowing them doesn't mean that uh, it's just a wave. It means that you have contact, you converse with them, you talk to them, they ask you questions about who you are and what you've done, and uh, <coughs> you have a chance to converse with them and, and give them a better picture of maybe who you are. And it may be a situation, boy, I sure like that guy. Uh, I'm going to try and find a way to get him on the team. Uh, SYC is from Dubai. All right. Football Challenge 21 is from South Korea. All right. Very cool. Uh, keep sending those in. Ooh, I can't move. What the heck's happening here? Uh, well, let's just answer these questions here. Um, Tunis Kadi says, LeBron can play wherever he wants. That's well, true. I mean, yeah. that's one of those things about being an all-around versatile player. Exactly right. Exactly um, right. Bubba James asks, what's a good benchmark for healthy cardio? Well, hmm. I mean, that's <laughs> – healthy cardio is something that you would have to be, be evaluated for by a doctor or something like that. But one of the things that we tell people that they should do is that you should train for the sport you're playing – Functional training is really the way to go. Uh, you know, a lot of people, they say, oh, uh, yeah, I'm getting into good cardiovascular shape for basketball. I'm going to go uh, run six miles a day. Yeah. And you, you have to think, well, how does that translate to playing basketball? There's no time during basketball where you're jogging for six miles straight. Yeah. Basketball is all about sprints and stops. So that should really be how you are training yourself cardiovascularly for basketball. Right. So. High interval training. Short uh, sprints. Short sprints. Uh, if you're on a track, one of the things that, that we've talked about before is sprint the straights, walk the curves. Um, but that is, you know, why, uh, you know, coaches have you do the ladder drill or suicides or just regular sprints because that's what you face when you go out on the court. Yeah. Um, so that's what we would say. Um, let's see here. Sergio Perez asks, what is the best way of giving assists during a game? Oh, that, that does, has a whole bunch of different potential answers. Um, kind of depends on the situation. Um, let's say that maybe you make a hard drive at, at a teammate's man. You're driving at his man. What do you think he's going to do? He's going to make a back cut. So we give him a little bounce pass on the back cut if he's open and gets him to the basket. There's just so many situations. I don't know how to answer that in just a, a, a moment or two. I, I think it, it really is like a, a mentality you have to have yeah. where you are creating disruption in the defense. Yeah. So one of the things we were talking about before when we were talking about the point guard tips is that you are taking active control and you are attacking the defense. Yeah. So what that does is that the defense has to react 
and they have to recover. And a lot of times that means that another defender has to come off or rotate to come get you. Right. And if you do that, that's going to create an open opportunity for your teammate where you can drop them the ball. Yep. Um, but the best way of giving assists during a game is to be aware of the opportunities and yep. to create the opportunities. And it's also on the other players, too. Like if they're just standing there with their hands up, they haven't made a case to get the ball in their hands. Yep. So they need to learn how to move without the basketball and create an opening. Well, and that kind of gets us back to one of the topics that we talk about quite often, too, and that is playing without the basketball. Uh, I mean, when you're playing without the basketball, you're actually trying to create <laughs> situations where a, a player or the players uh, 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 can be able to get you the basketball. And if you stand there like a, 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 just a, a, a totem pole, uh, you know, you're probably not going to catch the basketball in any meaningful situations at all, okay? Okay, this one is from Dzan Zelovac, who says, how can I fix my shot mechanics? You know, probably the best thing that you can do is you go to our videos uh, online. And, form shooting drill. Uh, and go to the form shooting drill. Actually, I would tell you to go to the videos that, that shows you about the mechanics of the shot and then go to the form uh, shooting video, and that'll show you how to practice it to get better at it, okay? Yeah, I think it comes down to doing the three pillars of practice. Yeah. Uh, the form shooting drill being the big big go-to in the first pillar. Right, right, right. Um, let's see. This one is from Daniel Abarca, who says, I'm six foot seven, 34-inch vertical, and I can't dunk. I'm 16. How can I fix that? Six seven with a 34-inch vertical? You should be throwing that down like a crazy man at six seven. What is uh, the problem? I mean, yeah, that, that was my question when I first saw that uh, question there is, when you have this size of uh, physique and the ability to elevate 34 inches, there's something going on on the other end of it at your hand or arm that you're not getting done. Yeah, well, we I, can't guess at that. If you had some idea, I keep throwing it off the back rim. Well, well, here's the thing is that if you're six foot seven, you have an almost three foot vertical, your head is up near the rim. Yeah, yeah, that's so. the point. Yeah. And so if you're missing those, there should be, you need to tell us what, what you think is going on and then we'll try and help you with it. Yeah. One of the things that, that I'm going to take just a moment to diverge on is this. Uh, oftentimes, too much, uh, and too much importance is put on dunking the basketball anyway. Uh, you take a look at most high school basketball teams, and, and some are, are, have you know just electric players that can jump out of the gym. But most players you find, there's maybe only one or two dunks a game, okay? And some really good teams, maybe they get more than that. But... It's more important that we be able to execute the uh, the offense and get the ball in without dunking. Dunks are worth two points. Yeah, yeah. that's so, right. They're they're just like a regular field goal. They're only so, two points. So you know, a lot of times we, it, when you're a young player or a young person, a lot of times you put so much emphasis on things because of the way they look. Yeah, the style points. Yeah. And so things like uh, fadeaways or dunks or uh, you know extremely long shots, uh, there's so much emphasis put on that. And so people, they're like, oh, I want to be able to do that. So they, they, they spend two hours a day working on a fadeaway or, mm -hmm. or you know, they're so fixated on dunking that they don't work on other things. Yeah. Well, how often are you going to get the dunk? Even yeah. like, you know, <laughs> Vince Carter in his heyday, I mean, he's getting, what, maybe four or five a game. Yeah. And that's like the top of the top. Yeah. Um, you have to be able to do other things. you got to be able to put the ball in the basket from mid-range. You need to be able to shoot from three. You need to be able to make free throws. You need to be able, be able to play defense and do all these things. Fadeaways, low percentage shot. Yeah. So why are you spending three hours a day on that? Exactly. It's not going to go in as much as an open shot. So learn right. to create space, learn to make an open shot. Yeah. Well, dunking the basketball is such a, a thrill for most every player. Yeah, and, mean, we, and we get that. Yeah, and, and, and sometimes we put too much emphasis on it. But I would really like to know, <coughs> Daniel, uh, what you think is keeping you from dunking that basketball. Yeah. There's got to be some other things in there that are holding you back because physically you got the attributes to be able to throw that thing down every time you go to the basket. Okay, Evan Cunningham is asking, if I have a knee injury, how would I increase my vertical, I guess that means jump, or abilities or something? Um, um, here's the thing. Number one, talk to your doctor. They're gonna give you advice on what you should right. do. Number two, heal yourself before you do anything that's going to agitate it or re-injure or whatever. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense to hurt yourself more. Yeah, and if you've got an injury, um, you need to know what kind of injury it is, how severe it is, 
and that will help to kind of allay you uh, to do whatever. I mean, I wouldn't be trying to work on my vertical jump if I had a knee problem of any kind yeah. until I healed. Um, SYC is saying, uh, can you make a video about the sweet spot of bank shots, English layups and stuff? That, that's a good idea. Yeah. One of the things that we did do is we did make a video on layups. I think yes. we've, we've done it on several layup videos where we mm -hmm. talk about um, where you put the ball on right. a layup. Right. There is a sweet spot in the corner of the shot box, but if you go watch those videos on, I think it's layups 101, and I think there's one like uh, never miss layups again or something yeah, like that. It, yeah. uh, if you go watch that, we tell you exactly where to put it on those. But yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, maybe we should do one on bank shots and English layups, eh. I mean, that's that's one of those, again, where you get into the territory of diminishing returns. And, on, and how often would you ever use them? That's the, that's the big point. Yeah, I be mean, able it's, to put down the solid ones that you're going to be looking at most of the time. It, it's, a, it's a complexity thing again, and that's not really the best. Yeah. Um, let's see here. Ooh, doo -doo. Slush Pup says confidence is key. Yeah, that's yeah, really important. Absolutely. Um, there was somebody asked a question here that I went by. Uh, this one is from Tunez Cottage, who says, I'm 5'11 player, trying to make it to the, the league the long way from Sweden. Wondered who you guys think I should mold my game after. Um, you know, don't mold your name after your game after anybody. Yep. Uh, the important things is uh, you probably have a different uh, physical athletic set than, let's say, Steph Curry or LeBron James, and the list could go on and on and on. What you really need to do is take a look at what you're capable of doing and then really work on those things to help you. And, you know, um, set some goals for yourself. Casey yeah. talks about these goals all the time and, and goals maybe, okay, what am I going to get done here? Uh, as And I don't know how old you are, but let's say that you're a high school age guy. And what, am I, what, what are my <coughs> goals do I have for myself by the time I graduate from high school? Accessible, progressive goals. Y yes. And what are going to be my goals in my first two years of college basketball if I go to play there? And then when I finish college. And, and what happens is that either you will be NBA ready uh, or you won't be. You know, there's not very many NBA, NBA players in the world. Um, There's only been a few thousand in the history of the NBA. Yeah, and so the possibilities of make it, making it are rather small. That doesn't mean that you shouldn't set your goals to maybe get there if you have the potential. Do but, that, but, but, but take it in gradual steps. But the thing is, is that you can't focus on trying to be like somebody else. Yes, right. I, I mean, it's, it's almost impossible to do that. And, and why would you want to be like a, a, you know, a, a cut rate, version of Steph Curry when you can be a top rate level of yourself yep. and you know you are, you are like you were saying you're going to have different ergonomics different body physiology and all that so don't try to focus your game after these people use them as motivation to kind yep. of keep pushing yourself forward and bettering yourself but really focus on bettering yourself using the fundamentals of the game right. and then branch out from there yep. don't try to go out there and shoot like Michael Jordan or whatever and then do that at the detriment of yourself because that doesn't really work for your body. Yeah. You know, very so, true. Very true. So, and we understand you see those guys on TV or you see them in person and you want to be like them. You want to be where they are, but that's not the way to get to them is to be imitations of them. Yeah. Be your, your be version of yourself. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> your boy, Nat is asking how to improve your jump. Uh, what exercises? Go check out our vertical jump videos here on YouTube where we have you know some very in-depth videos. Go check out the vertical jump handbook, which we which is kind of associated with that. You can also go to our, our, our website, shotscience.com. We have the jump box, which has all the training gear in it that you need to, to really get started on that stuff. And then we also have the all access area where we go through developing athleticism and vertical jump in there as well. So uh, that's what we would suggest. Um, let's see here. Uh, Cena fan, Michael fan says, how do I tell big guys to screen for me? Um, <laughs> well, that's, that's an interesting question. Um, oftentimes if you're in communication with him, you, you can really communicate with your eyes, but usually coaches have, um, offenses that emphasize uh, screening or don't emphasize screening. Maybe there's other elements that they have there instead. And so uh, 
what you might do too is, is uh, let people know, hey, listen, when I give you a look, uh, I want you to come screen for me, okay? Or set more screens for me because I know I can go by my guy and yours too. And so um, communication is probably the biggest thing that you can deal with right there to help yourself. Yeah. Uh, oh, crap. What, what were we talking about there? I was spacing out. Um, I had something to say. That was why I was going to okay. come back to it. But that's all right. Um, okay, this one is from... Uh, what is that basic in my problem? Where? My question. I've been thinking about... Well, this Tunis caught it. She was asking again, like, who is somebody that he should look to to kind of emulate or whatever, and he was saying Isaiah Thomas or Steve Nash or whatever. Again, well, we don't think it's good to do that kind of stuff. You know what you might do is... Oh, oh yeah, this is what we were talking about. How to tell the big guys you're going to screen for me. Uh -huh. Somebody said fist up and all that. Yeah, but here's the thing is that it's not really something that that you are directing unless it's outside of that play, and maybe you have, you've talked about yeah. that outside of that. Um, but you shouldn't be waiting around for somebody to screen for you. You have to kind of take it and, and go on your own. Well, yeah, you do. And, and usually the coaches of the teams uh, have a, an offensive scheme that they're running that maybe includes screening or maybe it doesn't include screening. So uh, it, it kind of falls into the coaches category there as well. Okay. You Need Milk says, how do you feel about Mello getting traded to OKC? Do you think it's going to work? Is it enough to beat the Warriors? Uh, no. <laughs> No, um, you know, they'll be pretty good uh, again because, you know, Mello's not a, a spring chicken kind of guy. I mean, he can play, there's no question, but he's been around a long time. And uh, um, I don't think they'll be able to beat the Warriors. I think the Warriors are going to take and win it again uh, this year. Yeah, the Warrior, and we're Warriors fans because yeah. we, we are from the Bay Area. We yeah. live here. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I think it's going to be interesting to see Carmelo playing with uh, you know Westbrook and 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 Paul George, especially those, when he doesn't touch a basketball that's, very much. That's what I was going to say is that like that those yeah. are kind of some uh, primary players, yeah. and so we'll we'll see how that goes. Yeah. Let us know what you guys think. Yeah. We'd love to know what you yeah, guys that think. Would be good too. Um, okay, so I think that's going to do it for us today. If we didn't get to your guys' questions, it's not because we don't like you; it's because we ran out of time. Yeah. Make sure that you're following us on all Shot Science stuff on social media, whether that's Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, whatever it is. We would love to have you guys there. Make sure you guys check out shotscience.com. And if you guys could get shirts, that would be so cool. If we if we saw uh, a picture of somebody in the Canary Islands wearing a Shot Science shirt yeah, or would be uh, awesome. somebody in Dubai, if you guys did that, it would blow our minds and it would be so awesome. And yeah. we would definitely repost that kind of stuff. Um, so check out shotscience.com. That's where we have all of our Shot Science stuff that helps us keep doing what we want to do. Um, and if you guys could leave these two questions for us the first question mm -hmm. that we ask you guys is where are you guys from yeah we want to know if you told us already tell us again because we want to see everybody tell us where you're from so what country you play basketball in every day we want to know and number two is we'll do the mellow question let us know what you guys think about that trade yeah uh, is it going to work out is it not who's who's your team this year um what do you think about the other trades that have happened it's yeah. been pretty crazy so uh let us know how all that's going so cool to see you guys. I know that we, our our buddy Denvi Star was here from Moscow, so uh, it was cool to see you. Sorry we didn't see you when you posted, but uh, uh, we'll see you guys next time. All Thanks right. very much. Bye guys. Bye.